Some often refer to bodybuilding as a chemical-based sport, basically chemical warfare at its finest, meaning it's all about who can take the most anabolic steroids, growth hormone, insulin, and numerous different peptides. While this depiction isn't necessarily accurate, it's some part true, and a lot of individuals will go down that route of chemical warfare to get the results with their body that they would truly want. Some individuals are willing to facilitate their own experiments and take massive quantities of anabolic steroids and other peptides to see what effects they might have and see how much progress they can really achieve doing different things outside of what is typically heard about in the gym or on the internet. This is an uncommon trait, I would argue, against most bodybuilders, and I would in fact say that the people who do this notoriously are the ones that die early. Boston Lloyd, Rich Piana, and many more come to mind when I talk about this stuff. My name's Chase Irons. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about how to do this stuff as healthy as possible. And I am an avid steroid user. <laughs> Chase Irons, a man that many would say is abusing far too many hormones for his own good and likely ending his life far too short, is someone we're going to talk about today. Chase is one of the few brave souls to enter into the really experimental gray area with a lot of his pharmaceuticals and how he approaches performance enhancing, venturing where few have gone to find new ceilings for himself, and arguably even more so for his audience, so that they know what truly works and what's just hearsay. But people People see what he does at a face value and criticize him for it. Very clearly, Greg Doucette has made several videos about Chase Irons and how unhealthy and destructive his behaviors are. And arguably in those videos, Greg really put a translucent light on how poor his understanding of human physiology really is, but that's for another video. I use three cc's a day right now. I do use tested Masteron. I do use 20 to 24 IUs of Serostim a day. All right. And so he's using about 20 IUs of growth hormone a day and using three cc's of Masteron and testosterone. You think that blood work is some gonna gonna verify that this is okay? Anyone that's taking this is way too much. There you see the interesting thing about Chase Irons is he has been posting on YouTube for about nine years now, talking about things not just for his own benefit, but talking about things for the benefit of his audience, even when they were only a few hundred strong. Trying to show others from the very start that he is doing certain things and he's then explaining if those things are working or not working, and then practically telling people how to replicate these results if they do seem like efficacious strategies to build a good physique, better health, and muscles. Chase Irons isn't always the most hands-on guy when it comes to the science background of things and won't explain the mechanisms very well compared to other people who are really science-based, but he will be the one who is in the trenches, doing the experimental work on himself and performing what arguably could be seen as a self-study, something that many bodybuilders would say they like to do, but don't often do it. And obviously there's not going to be science produced in this industry for us. And so people have to do out their own experimental processes. And that often looks like doing crazy things and then testing your health to see what's working and what's not and measuring results. And this arguably is exactly what built his audience to the staggering amount of subscribers that he has today. As of now, Chase is approaching 50,000 subscribers, which at this time is something I could only dream of. So let's just rewind as far back as the internet will let us go to learn a little bit more about Chase and his origins. Because I do think it's going to be important for you to understand a little bit about what that chemical warfare can look like and understand that there is a taboo about steroid usage and he's kind of one to prove it because of other people's reactions. There's also a lot more to learn, so stay along with me. Chase starts out as a young trainer taking on public clients, gaining only a few hundred views per video, talking about things such as cleans and deadlifts and more CrossFit style workouts than anything. He doesn't start out bodybuilding and instead he's doing sprints and very aerobic based activity. He would even go as far as to practice fasting very regularly, something you couldn't catch a bodybuilder dead trying to do. Chase in fact loved to wear these really cool shades, which I think are very uh, a good sign of the times in the time he was making these videos and take nice jogs around the lake, which is cool. He also went to school in Oklahoma, however I don't honestly know what for, I just didn't find that anywhere, so he went to school in Oklahoma 
Oklahoma College, that is. So if you are an Oklahoma person, shout out to you. But soon after doing a series of cutting challenges and basically shredding his body fat down as much as he can with if it fits your macros, he had moved to an interesting type of video that does very well in the YouTube algorithm. It was 10,000 calorie challenges or just food eating challenges in general. At the early stages of his career in YouTube, this was the most popular kind of video he would post, garnering thousands of views after only acquiring 300 or so views per video before. This was followed by several supplement reviews, which also garnered sizable amounts of views on each of those videos. People really enjoyed Chase's opinion, and I guess watching him eat as well. And then, because of this and the quick rise to his viewership, Chase started eating a lot more. It soon became a very strong trend within his channel. He would go on to post several food challenges in the distant past. These videos would include him chowing down on the likes of McDonald's and much, much more, all for the viewership. What I think we're actually witnessing here was a younger Chase Irons becoming a little bit disordered with his eating. Following an aggressive cut and doing an aggressive diet, he finished converted into a bulk. But as he did that, his videos soon relate closely together with binge eating. And of course, these videos only lasted for a brief time before moving on to normal dieting content. But I think it is pretty common to see, especially after someone's first deep cut where they really get lean, or afterwards they go a little bit crazy on the food. And again, I think this is what we're seeing with Chase here, is the very new concept of self-restricting food aggressively had sort of rebounded into this effect of wanting to eat everything. And his justification was to post it on his channel as content and people definitely interacted with that content and so he kept doing it for at least a short amount of time. While he was religiously posting these food challenges, he was also posting daily vlogs about bulking, which would go through his workouts and his daily eating habits. In his early videos, Chase sounds interestingly youthful and young. He looks he looks young. And that amount of carbs from straight up health food because I mean you'll and I think many people do before they start hammering PEDs and trying to get size on, as it causes a lot of oxidative stress and through oxidation, it can age your skin. However, his first bulk wouldn't last very long before converting back to a cut again. He posted a video labeled the Summer Shredding Contest Vlog, and this was only five weeks after having started his bulk, leading me to believe that this may have been inspired by reckless eating behaviors after his initial cut, which required him to then release some of the fat he had gained through tons of eating challenges. Another artifact of what we see typically when people do their first cut and then rebound from it. However, it seems that around this time, he started to shift his content. Never before had Chase had a video where there was the words bodybuilding in a title or thumbnail, but now you start to see this word more commonly. Chase starts to describe himself as a bodybuilder. And you can also see that Chase was quite a bit bigger around this time too. His delts, his chest, his traps all really grew in size as we really only get to see the upper half of Chase for most of his videos. Then Chase posted a video for the first time ever that was labeled the side effects of bodybuilding, where he discussed his chronically high blood pressure at 230 pounds, as well as the best ways to keep blood pressure low. I was weighing 260 pounds, probably about 10 to 12 percent body fat. I mean, my blood pressure was like 160 over 100, I believe. Um, and it was at that point that I decided that uh, that, that was unhealthy but that is actually what really kills bodybuilders. And he mentioned that those were to stay lean and continue to do cardio even when bulking. As well, he mentions sleep apnea as he's had this issue for a very long time. And he mentions that many people should get checked out, especially if they're heavy set individuals. He also briefly mentioned the word drugs. He said whether people choose to take drugs or not, but he didn't actually mention anything else outside of the word of drugs. But this was still a new and historical event in Chase's channel. Again, he didn't say that he was taking drugs, but just as an additive to his overall points about health, he mentions that some people do take drugs. Suddenly, after discussing health, you can see that Chase picked up a whole new style of eating. This was called the vertical diet. To explain the diet briefly, Stan Efferding had come up with it a long time ago. Right around the time that Chase started posting these videos, roughly six years ago, was when it really gained popularity. The main principle is that you should eat mostly nutritious foods as a priority and not just your macronutrient targets, but your micronutrients 
micronutrient targets. So you need to prioritize things like lean red meats, fruit juices, dairy products, fatty fish, very nutrient dense vegetables like baby carrots, salt and other minerals, and lots of good stuff. And then once you've met your basic daily needs, you scale up the nutrient list to less nutrient dense foods to just get your general calories and macronutrients in. And it's called the vertical diet because you start with your base of really nutrient dense foods and then scale up from there. In the perspective of a guy with a degree in science and nutrition, I think this is a beautiful diet. I think it's great for people who have really high degrees of expenditure and people who are aerobic athletes or anaerobic athletes. Both, I think it works great for. So like I said, during this time, Chase started making a ton of these vertical diet videos, placing it in the thumbnail and title. And this was exactly the time that the vertical diet really started to gain traction on social media. So as a result, his videos started to gain massive traction. His first video ever, Vertical Diet, blew up, getting his unknown channel tons of attention, spawning a new series for Chase. Thereafter, he labeled every video Vertical Diets, and these videos, just like the first one, blew up, getting hundreds of thousands of views from only obtaining a few hundred views in the videos before. In between these videos, he snuck in a video labeled Full Day of Eating, The Vertical Diet, Why I Don't Drink Alcohol. It seemed to blend in with the rest of his content quite well without any major changes. However, upon clicking the video and watching for less than a minute, Chase discloses that he talks about steroids in the video that you were about to watch, which at this point was another huge change for Chase's channel and also a huge pivoting point for the content he would begin to produce in the future. I've been putting this one together for a few days and I've really been uh, hesitant on putting it out because I'm just going to go out and say it, I talk a bit about steroids steroids in this video. During this brief statement in the beginning of the video, he mentioned that the physique he wants and has currently is completely impossible to do naturally. Then mentioning that he made the decision to start steroids when he was 165 pounds and super lean, in which he felt great but wanted to be better, wanted to be bigger. And at this point was when he saw the only means forward was steroids to achieve the body that he would want. Also in this video, he mentioned that he wishes more people would open up about their usage and to be honest about it, period. Because in his his mind, the more people speak on it, the less of a taboo it becomes in American society and the more accepted all of the gym bros become. A statement like this would become a true hallmark to Chase's channel and his experiments with PEDs. And another hallmark is you would see Chase begin to experiment with performance enhancing drugs often. In this very early case, he was injecting growth hormone intravenously, mentioning it in the video, something that is highly risky to do and very rare to see anybody doing. As well, he was mixing anadrol powder powder in with his pre-workout powder, which keep in mind, this was his recovery protocol, taking drugs that specifically cause a lot of hepatotoxicity and damage to that organ. Now to provide some perspective, IV injections are highly dangerous to do without the guidance of a medical professional. As well, it turns out that IV intravenously injected growth hormone doesn't act any differently from sub-Q or intramuscular injections outside of the fact that the onset to effect is much quicker. So he mentions in this video that the dose he's taking becomes much more powerful when taken intravenously, and this is not true. Usually what someone would do with growth hormone is inject it subcutaneously or just below the skin. It's an innocuous injection and it works pretty well, but the onset of effects from growth hormone does take a little bit longer. You can also do intramuscular injections, which will speed up the absorption quite a bit, but nothing near as fast as an intravenous injection, which keep in mind, this means he's directly injecting his veins with growth hormone. As for the powdered anadrol, all, this is an oral steroid hormone. It's extremely powerful compared to other 17 alkylated anabolic androgenic steroids. And in that sense, it's also highly hepatotoxic. However, this is generally with prolonged exposure. And it seems here, Chase was only using it a few to a couple times per week for a short duration of time as an experiment. My point with all this is this is where we can start to see that Chase was opening up about his secrets, what he was doing on the inside, and sharing more of his feelings and opinions on these things things as opposed to just sharing what he was eating in his workout routines. And the comments show just how well people received this type of content. With some saying, so refreshing to hear all of this, your honesty got me to subscribe. Keep it up. Love from London. Or 
I really appreciate your honesty. Many people buy into the fake natties selling dreams, and I fully respect you being so open and not selling that dream. Now, after this brief moment, Chase hadn't really mentioned much about steroids for some time. His channel continued to cover more full day of eating videos and this summer shredding challenge that he was on, followed by a really sad video where Chase talked about his dad passing in September. His dad was an alcoholic, and that extremely negatively impacted Chase Irons. In this video, Chase becomes very exposed to his emotions and allows himself to vent on camera, which is something most people would never do on camera. But this is also something I can relate to extremely well. I was removed from the home from Child Protective Services in the United States when I was a little kid due to my own parents, well, mother being an alcoholic, and I didn't have a father at the time. So I was simply removed from the home and put into other not so great situations. But this was another hallmark of Chase being a very transparent individual, exposing his feelings, being honest and being upfront about everything that he's going through and doing. I think this is a specific trait that a lot of people find value in with Chase and for good reason. And at this point, it was when Chase posted another video relating to steroids with an experimental thumbnail that we have never seen before on Chase's channel. In the thumbnail, we see big letters saying D-ball. This is the first video that we actually see Chase begin to address PEDs front and center on the thumbnail and title, something that Chase had never done before, keeping it relatively quiet. Now, for those of you who don't know, D-Ball is another 17 alkylated oral steroid called Dianabol. It's one of the earliest formed steroids and probably one of the least beneficial in terms of its off-targeted effects in the human body. Of course, with Chase's naturally good and open conversations with the camera, people really enjoyed his perspective and found it generally useful, soon asking him for more. And this was when there was a real phase shift in Chase's content. Before, there was hardly any mentionings of PEDs. Now, Chase is exclusively producing videos about pharmacology, or at least mentioning it in every one of the videos that he posts, producing videos about mistakes people make on their first cycle, and other videos about how to improve one's health while on cycle, and revealing his experimental stacks at the time, telling people what he is taking, and things he is trying to see if they're highly effective. A lot of this was SARMs and peptides, but it's soon developed into more of the androgens that we all know of, testosterone, primobolin, masteron, so on and so forth. These are the same anabolic steroids that I mentioned being 17 alkylated, except they're injectable and not 17 alkylated, making them a little bit more tolerable for the human body. As Chase continued to post, his audience began to love more of what he was posting. No one was really talking about this at the time, and certainly no one was tracking what they were doing and actually getting follow-up blood work and good metrics to support their experiments. So naturally, as a response, Chase dug further down the rabbit hole, from posting himself doing cleans eight years ago to just three years in time showing people how to backload syringes and inject themselves on camera. People notably started to value Chase's words more. Suddenly, Chase went from a guy just talking about diets and cheat meals to a guy who knew a whole lot more than everyone else about steroids and was in the trenches testing this stuff. And this was the point in Chase's arc where he started talking often about being a bodybuilder and how to stay healthy. Words that really up until this point, we only saw once or twice. Also, like we said before, Chase was looking larger. Now, he was looking extremely large, having nearly gained 20 pounds since when we started this video. Chase then posted a video labeled Growth Hormone Tips. This video went into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm for Chase's channel, quickly setting the record for the most viewed video on Chase's channel, again, further solidifying that this was the true niche that Chase belonged in and can thrive in, as he cared greatly about the topic, had a lot to say, and people really enjoyed it. Now, the chains were, in fact, completely off. Chase Irons definitively became the drug-using bodybuilder on YouTube, that everyone would go to to learn a little bit more about his experiments, posting everything from his gyno stories to how he brews his own anabolic steroids. He would go on to experiment with SARMs when they had just become popular in the market, several different peptides, and a more than numerous concoction of steroids. However, since the very first video of Chase discussing his steroid usage several years prior, he maintained the same stance. Speaking about steroid use should be done more as it brings awareness to a small demographic that doesn't know how to be safe, but also that it often puts us bodybuilders in a corner of society where we aren't allowed to discuss things openly due to fear of judgment, leading to people doing extremely unhealthy things, ending their lives early, and feeling like they have no 
support system. Chase continued to post video after video for years about his drug use, educating people on how to get labs, check their blood pressure, and to do steroids as safe as humanly possible. Meanwhile, he was experimenting on himself and then trying to inform people about his experiments and what was seen as effective and what was seen as not so effective. Chase then started a private group in which people could join and learn more about what Chase was doing as well as some of the tactics that Chase would deploy to get his enhancements. Then even opening up a channel membership section where he would post private videos explaining further how to inject or do other things which I am not at the liberty to say here. It was at this point around 2020 where Chase really started to make a living off of YouTube and moving forward would even open his own private gym. Soon after having a child, having a real pregnancy in which again he deployed experimental means to increase his fertility and furthermore develop a human child. Now we fast forward to modern day, as Chase grew his audience brick by brick, he continued to experiment on himself, testing rigorously with labs and organ imaging. He started to do more and more insane doses, following that up with a really deep analysis of testing. Initially, the first video we covered of him, he was talking about taking 300 milligrams of testosterone. Now, the doses have escalated far beyond 5 to 6 grams per week of testosterone. I know that people aren't familiar with this number, but that's 50 to 60 times the amount that therapeutic testosterone would be applied at. However, this was just testosterone. Chase quickly became known as one of the only people to use astronomically high doses of growth hormone and completely publicize this. Quickly getting recognition from people like Greg Douche, who talked about him being one of the most unhealthy people out there and someone who is leading himself to a very quick and inopportune death. Red's bad. It means stop. Green means go. Red means stop. And so all vigorous Steve had to do is say, I see red stop. His label quickly went from the CrossFit athlete to the guy who abused steroids as a bodybuilder on the internet. However, this hasn't stopped his audience from thoroughly enjoying content. In fact, Chase has only grown his audience due to the controversy, getting more recognition than he ever has for his experiments and videos. While doing all of these experiments is definitely insane, he's kept one thing constant through all of his progression. He's been honest, opened and completely transparent with his audience. Something most influencers can't do until the lies start to leak out of their teeth. As well, Chase has done more health checkups than I've ever seen anyone do, from organ imaging to blood work that is much more thorough than a doctor could ever prescribe, to urinalysis testing. He's done it all, completely documenting his entire journey in bodybuilding very well with the entire analytical sphere as well, not just telling you about his opinions and how he fits Thinks, yes, that's in there, but he also does the detailed research on his own body. He gets the organ imaging, he gets the blood work, he tracks it over time and very, very rigorously. This is unprecedented within our bodybuilding space, especially in the individuals who use performance enhancing drugs. Now, why is this important? Why is Chase Irons a pioneer? Why is his channel so unique? While I often talk about steroids being awful for you, I also talk a lot about about steroids being not the worst thing you can take. And in fact, if you have guidance and can take them appropriately, you can walk away harm-free for the most part. What Chase does is he tries to find the left and right limits of what's objectively okay and objectively not okay, and then publish this information for everyone else. This creates a very good awareness of what is going to hurt a person versus keep them in the game longer when it comes to performance-enhancing drugs. As well, it also breaks certain taboos about steroid usage. Because Chase has a beautiful family, a, an amazing personality, and someone who's really thoughtful and considerate of the other people around him to include his audience, we get to see a side of someone who abuses steroids at the highest level who's highly compassionate and unlike what most people would consider a roid rager. He's intelligent and well socialized, and he shows you that just because someone is juicing doesn't mean they have to be an ass hat. While his behaviors are nothing short of risky, 
His ability to stay consistent in publishing content, doing experiments that are completely radical, and being a genuine human being are something that's completely uncanny. And it's personally why I believe that his channel is one of the greatest resources bodybuilders have on the internet. Because he does the experiments, he takes the notes, he actually does the footwork, and we can all benefit from it in some degree or another. Now, am I going to preach to you that what he's doing is just proving steroids aren't harmful at all? Absolutely not. There's very well something going on inside of his body that we can't just see from lab work organ imaging or a simple urinalysis. There might be more to the picture, but I think it's pretty clear to say that when looking at all of his data compared to a general population person, he's much healthier and in fact sustainably healthier across eight years of using steroids. And if someone was to say, use a cycle, they would be able to get a wealth of knowledge instead of having to trust their gym bro or their drug dealer with advice who's only done a couple cycles himself and doesn't have any practical application nor any implication of what the drugs might do to that person that's several years down the line. And this in lies where most people do mess up because they're young, they don't have resources that people would develop in certain situations if it wasn't such a taboo and people could openly use steroids like they do in many other countries. So Chase is an absolute legend for the content he's posted because while it is not healthy and most people should not do it, it does at least provide a resource for people to learn and realize what these things will do and the implications of them if they do go down that road. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Go head over to Chase's channel and help him out. Subscribe to him. Get him up to 100k. He deserves it. And I will see you in the next video. Oh, before I go, yes, I did change an outfit and the lighting mid-video. Glad, glad you noticed. Really glad.